Hello, welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja, and today I briefly wanted to share some of my ideas about what is now increasingly becoming the Pakistani Anglophone literature subfield of study. And I just recently participated in a national panel in Pakistan through Zoom, of course, on this very topic, and it was organized by Pakistan Academy of Letters as part of the Pakistan Week celebrations for Pakistani Independence Day on August 14th. And that conversation with some really brilliant Pakistani scholars got me thinking a little more about this topic and I thought I should share some of my thoughts about it. Also, I have published a few things about it, but I have not published anything extensive on this topic. And this panel kind of encouraged me to probably do more, maybe a book length project on Pakistani English writing, most probably the novel. And I will share some more thoughts about it in the future. But what came across to me clearly was this uh, kind of anxiety about representation. And then not necessarily the panelists, but I was looking at the comments. So some comments were about absolute freedom of expression and that these authors should be able to write whatever they want. And the other mm, comments were about the anxiety of representation itself. How are they representing Pakistan? Is it authentic? Is it positive or negative? What purpose does it serve? And all of these are interesting questions. And these kind of questions most of the times are always raised by globally marginalized communities. And for that explanation, I always go to Kobina Mercer's book, Welcome to the Jungle. I'll post a link in the description. Now, in uh, writing about the first ever black arts exhibit in London, Kobina Mercer writes about that after people visited that, and mostly people of African descent, when they visited that exhibit, most of the times the peoples were complaining that such and such work was missed, Some so many things were missed, and that is the term that he calls the burden of representation. And the reason these people were insisting on that one exhibit to carry the entire burden of the African continent was because it was so rare at that time to have such exhibitions, right? And that expectation to carry the burden of representation is also part of the national anxiety in Pakistan, where if you read a novel by Mohsin Hamid or anyone else, most of us expect that novel to carry the burden of the entire culture. And I think part of the reason is also that we are aware of how that novel will be received in the Western world. Then there is the question of authenticity, which I kind of disagree with, because to me, the, the authentic is always discursive. You cannot dig deep in a culture and find something and retrieve something authentic, because even if we retrieve it, it will be done in language semiotically. And the moment you enter language, you are in discourse, right? But by and large, the biggest anxieties that I noticed in this session, but also which I've noticed through my conversations with Pakistani students and scholars are about representations of Pakistan elsewhere in the world. And when I wrote my couple of articles about the topic, my first article dealt with the issues of horizon of expectations. So I was going through Hans Robert Yoss and my sort of my argument was that maybe this expectations by Pakistani readers from Pakistani writers in English that they should represent Pakistan in a certain positive light stems from a horizontal gap. 
and the horizontal gap is that the English novel written by Pakistanis or diasporic Pakistanis is already far ahead in the world because it is trying to compete with other English novels and the reader expectations have not caught up with that so there is that horizontal gap. Then in a second article I tried to further expand this point of view because that is what I was trying to understand the two poles of representation right representation by the author the question of the author author's identity and author's right to represent and the question of reception by the Pakistani readers. And in my second article, I kind of thought that class doesn't answer this question because most of the people who read English novels in Pakistan are already in the middle class. But if they are in the middle class, why are their expectations of the novel still grounded in a sort of national anxiety? That's the question I was trying to answer. So what I did was I used Boldu's concept of habitus. And my tentative suggestion there was that maybe the Pakistani readers are occupying a nationalistic habitus where they are looking at these novels from a point of view of being Pakistanis and the novelists themselves probably have a more cosmopolitanist habitus that means that they are writing novels that would appeal to larger global audiences and so while in that essay I cautioned that the Pakistani readers, readers need to probably you know develop their critical skills beyond the national expectations but I was also careful to point out that the Pakistani writers writing in English are not proffering their works in a vacuum those works are received within a given discursive space in the West where the stereotypes about Muslim stereotypes about Pakistan are already existent and perpetuated through several media, through novels, through newspapers, websites, you know, Fox News. So my cautionary conclusion there was that, okay, it's okay to criticize national politics or anything else, but also, you know, give us some hopeful stories, something that is positive. That was not necessarily the only thing I suggested in that essay. But people have read those essays and cut off my whole argument and cited the last paragraph to prove a point that maybe I'm suggesting this simplistic idea that they should always give positive spin on Pakistan, which as a scholar, as little as I know, is something I will never argue for. But those anxieties are still at play. And my point was that just as we expect the readers to fill that horizontal gap, right, and to read the novel as others would read it, right, as their global counterparts would read it, and to give the authors the absolute right to represent whatever they want to represent in whatever artistic rendering. Similarly, the authors also have a certain responsibility, and that responsibility is not of painting rosy pictures of Pakistan, but to tell more complex stories, to tell more grounded stories, stories that cannot be generalized as a stand-in for the Pakistani culture itself, which is not a monolithic culture. But also for the readers to understand that, you know, no novel, no book can carry the burden of an entire culture. And that is kind of too much to expect from a novelist or from a short story, right? So the specificity also matters. And these are the some of the things that came across to me uh, from the panel that I participated. And I loved all the panelists and, you know, their views. I think I learned a lot. Another thing that I completely understood was also the questions of diaspora and the rights to represent it came up too. So who gets to represent Pakistan in what way? Who has the right to do so? There was a question about why there are so many works about Pakistani fiction, 
mostly written by Western scholars. And I personally don't believe those kind of in those kind of binaries. My idea is anyone who can enter a culture through its languages has the right to represent them. They may not have lived experience, but they can still rely on research. But there is a need, of course, for Pakistanis who have a lived experience in Pakistan, maybe have more entry into the culture because of their linguistic abilities, because of knowing the culture, the part of Pakistan where they come from. And that's where I feel motivated now to actually work on a monograph that deals with Pakistani fiction in English. So that was personally in professional sense and in terms of my responsibility as a scholar, one of the biggest lessons that I learned. But beyond that, what I learned even more acutely is the level of interest in intellectual work in Pakistan. Now, this was a Zoom session. Only 100 people could be permitted on a weekend. And can you imagine that the organizers had to request people to leave the room so that they could let the speakers in? There was so much interest in that. And that this was organized by Pakistan Academy of Letters on a national scale, on a national level, already tells us that so much work, cultural work, is being done. And I, I am grateful and delighted that I was invited to be a part of it. And for that, I need to extend my thanks to Dr. Safir Avan, Dean of English, National University of Modern Languages, and Dr. Shiraz Dasti for inviting me and encouraging me to join this panel. And I am grateful delighted to be part of this uh, venture with Pakistani scholars and as always I will continue to collaborate with them, continue to share my writings and materials with them and if any one of you watching it out there in Pakistan wants to collaborate with me on any project that is within my limited expertise I'll be very happy to join hands with you and do this work of cross-cultural understanding. That's all I have to share, and as always, thanks to all those who invited me, and thanks to uh, Asma Mansoor for organizing the whole um, thing. Dr. Asma Mansoor, thank you so much, and please feel free to send me your questions or concerns, and if you would like me to cover any other topic about Pakistani literature in English, please post it in the comments and I'll be happy to address it in the future. Stay safe, take care of each other, and remember the work of culture is complex, requires a lot of diligence, but most importantly, it requires love and compassion. Thank you so much and peace and love.